Welcome to the Libertarian Counterpoint. Your host today is Richard Fields. Richard Fields here, sitting in for James uh, on Libertarian Counterpoint. Welcome to the show. Welcome Charles Strange to the show, our special guest, along with uh, regular uh, panelist John Cameron. Uh, Charles, you have a story to tell about your son, who was, if, as I understand it, on the SEAL team that, uh, that killed Osama bin Laden. Tell the story. Yes, my name is Charles Strange, gold star father of Petty Officer First Class Michael Strange. Uh, Killed in action August 6, 2011, along with 29 other brave Americans and eight Afghans in a Chinook helicopter in Afghanistan in the Tangine Valley. <clears throat> it was the biggest loss of life in Iraq and Afghanistan, 30 men, and it was the biggest loss of life in the history of America, 22 guys from Naval Dev Group, Navy Special Warfare. Uh, Michael called me April about 14th, uh, 2011, before they were going in to kill Osama bin Laden. He said, Dad, everything's getting shut down. You won't hear from me for two weeks. And I was, what's going on? What's going on? He's like, no, no, no. And he couldn't talk. And uh, he said, uh, if something happens, you'll hear about it, Dad. And uh, May 1st, the, the killing of Osama, Osama bin Laden. And uh, he came home in June. And it was his birthday, 2011. He was 25. He was born June 6th, D-Day. And uh, we had a big party for him and a bunch of his friends. And uh, But he was different. After he came home from that raid, he grabbed me by the bicep. He said, Dad, you wouldn't believe what's going on in this country. Right up in my face. I'm like, what's the matter, Michael? And he started pacing, walking back and forth. And he started talking about a will. I was like, what are you talking about a will for? And uh, he told his mother, his sisters, friends at the party, Aunt Maggie stopped there, you know, and it was different. And uh, a few of the other men on that on that uh, on that Chinook extortion seventeen also did the same thing. Set up a will. One guy put it in the freezer. One guy brought his grandparents down, his kids, his wife. They all lived down there in Virginia, down by Dam Neck, Little Creek, and uh, they knew something was going on, and. Uh, so why would our, our own government kill our own guys, right? That's, you know, this guy's a conspiracy guy, da-da-da-da-da. And uh, I believe that all the corruption that's going on in Washington, D.C., with these congressmen and these senators, and, and so the people all the way up to the top, all the way up to the top. Uh, you know, I, I believe, like, the, being in, in Afghanistan for 20 years, a country that's a little bit bigger than Texas, with the most powerful military in the world. If nobody don't see something wrong here, there's something wrong. You know, look at poor Pat Tillman. We talked to Pat Tillman's parents, you know. If the lies keep coming. And uh, October 2011, we um, went down for the briefing, all 60 parents. And uh, while we're down there, we bring them there. Jeffrey Colt did the investigation in two weeks. Did an investigation in two weeks in Afghanistan, about 30 men that died. And uh, so he's telling us what happened. We're in this theater down in Virginia Beach and, and down by Dam Neck, all 60 parents. And he's going over to pilots and over to pilots. And we get it, you know, God bless him. I know him. But the one pilot, he never flew in Afghanistan. He had thousands of hours, but he flew in Iraq. And the other pilot was a new pilot, God bless him, you know. And, um, uh, then he went into saying that, you know, the Taliban in the Tangine Valley and uh, it was an RPG shot 100 yards in the pitch black. And it was a lucky shot. I stood up. I said, lucky shot. All our sons are dead. What are you? What, what's wrong with you? We're playing basketball here, football, lucky shot. And uh, a couple of seals, calm down, calm down, calm down. There's something wrong here. And uh, I asked him, what happened to the black box, box, which is really orange? And he went, a flash flood came and washed it away. We even sent in extra men. We thought we heard the beeper. And uh, there was controversy about the black box. They didn't have them in the 1963 CH-47Ds. Uh, some people say, but it was refurbished in 1984, that Chinook. So there was some kind of recording device in there. And um, 
at the end of Jeffrey Colt, you know, uh, telling us what happened and uh, the investigation and all, um, they handed us a folder. And in that folder, there was 25 pages and a disc. So I get home and, uh, you know, you're out of your mind. You buried your son. It was just sitting next to you. It's the worst thing in the world to bury a child, no matter how you lose a child, you know. And uh, you, I open up the 25 pages and you can read the first page. You can read the second page. But the rest of the page, there's no ink. There's no toner. You can't read it. I called up Admiral Sean Pibus. He was commander in chief of CENTCOM. I said, Sean, uh, I got a bad copy here. I can't read this. And he said, well, Charlie, uh, I got a lot of complaints about that. I said, all right, send me another one, Sean. He said, I can't. We burned it. I said, you burned it? Two months later, you burned all the paperwork about what happened to my son and these men? So I hang up with him and that disc, you put the disc in and all these little blocks pop up, like 200 little blocks. And uh, my wife gets on the computer after about seven hours, she finds out if you click, 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 and then click, 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 1,364 pages came out. And uh, it talks about how the Taliban knew. The Taliban knew exactly what they were doing. They were under the trees, Mr. Fields. They were on the roof. There were six IEDs planted around the landing site and going to the landing site. Um the 1,364 pages is, is in my new book, uh, Relentless. I wrote, just finished the book, and it's documented. It's what they gave me, you know? So we fought tooth and nail trying to get a congressional hearing, trying to get some answers. Uh, we've had 40 of the parents come uh, write in questions. Uh, we had a national press club at in Washington, D.C., we had Alan West, General Boykin, General Valet, Navy SEAL Ben Smith, 17 of the Gold Star parents. It was filled with cameras. Nobody played it. Nobody played it. Nobody in the media played it? Nobody in the media played it. Dave, well, it Dan, can I ask you can I ask you a couple of questions? Do you mind? Sure. Yeah. I don't I don't if you were I I didn't, you know, if Richard you're, you're moderating this if you want to go, go ahead. ahead. Yeah. So um, I, my heart goes out to you for the loss of your son. I, I can't, I only have one child. She's, uh, you know, my daughter. She has enough personalities to where it's like having a bunch of kids. But um, no, she's, 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 she's a piece of work, but uh, the apple doesn't fall very far from the tree. So I cannot comprehend. I cannot comprehend that loss. And, uh, you know, that's the one loss that that very that, that a lot of people just don't come back from. You know, you can lose your spouse, you can lose your job, you can lose your, lose your limbs, but you know, the loss of a child is is brutal. So my heart goes out to you. Um, how how many of the the SEAL team that were part of um, the the uh, killing of Osama bin Laden were were on that Chinook? Was it just your son or is that that entire team was on there or how many of the people that were actually involved in the bin Laden uh, uh, project were on that same Chinook with him? You know? I know of three. And how many how were many? on the team? That took out bin Laden, three yeah. that got killed with my son. So there that's that I knew the, I'm sorry, there were on the entire bin Laden team. How many people? Three that I know of. And all three got killed? Yes. So how many total people were involved in killing bin Laden? How many SEALs were involved in that in that um, action? Do you know? Yeah, I'm not, I'm not positive on that now. I know uh, the Chinook, uh, I know when they were going into the compound to kill Osama bin Laden, uh, the guy hanging out the side of the helicopter was my son, Michael. Yeah. Um, I was at a dinner in uh, Virginia, and two members of SEAL Team 6 pulled me out. I was tapped on the shoulder by a two-star admiral, and some men from SEAL Team 6 want to talk to you. And uh, there's been different ones. And actually, the main – my son would never talk. You know, the code – he was a cryptologist. Uh, yeah. he, he was a code breaker. He was the best in the world. Uh, I'm not saying that because he was my son. They gave him the National Intelligence Medal of Valor. Only 17 have ever been given out in the history of America since World War II and the Wind Talkers. And uh, 
we're in Dover, August 2011, and you know you're out of your mind. We're in a hangar, and uh, Barack Hussein Obama came up to me, sidestepped me in, he grabbed me by the shoulders. He said, "Michael changed the way America lived. Michael could do this, and Michael could do that." And I was like, I grabbed the President Obama by the shoulder. I said, "I don't need to know about my son. I need to know what happened." And they said, "Well, like this, the Secret Service guys grabbed me and." Uh, then I went outside, had a water, and came back, and uh, he gave me another hug. I said, is there going to be a congressional hearing about this? And he went, we're going to look into this very, very, very deep three times. And that was it. We, we tried. We've been in Washington, D.C. 30 times. Uh, no numerous parents. Uh, at Alan West, you know, with the, with the National Press Club. Jason Chaffetz, Congressman Chaffetz, Chaffetz out of Utah, he had, uh, we were there, he was going to have a congressional hear for, hearing for us, and uh, then they called it Honoring Remembering the 30 Americans and Bart the Wall, Warrior Dog, and he was killed with them too. And, uh, that's when we had 42, 42 parents wrote in questions to Jason Chaffetz, and uh, I'm like, all right, let's have, somebody has to be held accountable. You know, we know it wasn't a lucky shot, and three weeks before, the hearing, they said, all the parents can ask questions except for you, Mr. Strange, in the Rayburn building. And me, we had Larry Clayman helping us at the time, uh, the lawyer, Larry Clayman, and uh, the parent, what do you buy? All, everybody except me. And then two weeks before the hearing, none of the parents could ask any questions. Congress is going to ask the questions. And um, it was on C-SPAN 3. You can look at I think it's still up, C-SPAN 3. And Gary Reed came and represented the military. He was uh, the right-hand man to Chuck Hagel. And uh, <clears throat> they were, my son, they, they said that my son was burned beyond recognition. Um, there was only 38 skulls and 38 sea spines. Once it says it right here, uh, Pentagon spokesman, Navy Captain Jane Campbell said that in a statement, because the remains are on un- the un- 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 <laughs> Un, unbearable to see at this point. Next to Ken are not in a position to grant approval for media access or to dignify the transfer. So they said 38 skulls, 38 cease fines, and uh, my son wasn't burned at all. I got autopsy pictures a few months later after from Dover. He was like this with holding the gun. Not burned at all. His ankle was almost over. So Jason Chaffetz brings Gary Reed in and these other people for uh, for the hearing. It wasn't no congressional hearing. I don't even like saying that. To honor and remember. And none of the none of the questions the forty two parents wrote in, except for one guy from Florida named Mister Micah. He's the only one who read the questions, and he blasted them. And I think the other people were there. They didn't even know about extortion 17. Why would you somebody send somebody that knows? And uh, we never got we never got a congressional hearing. We never had anybody held accountable. And that's why I'm on here today. I can't thank you guys enough, Mr. Fields. Let people know extortion 17 should roll off the tongues of the American people. 30 guys died. You know, it's 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 in Afghanistan, 93 days after the bin Laden raid. And I have the paperwork right here from the 1300 pages. Mm-hmm. Tell me we're under trees there the, in the investigation in the investigation, the three eyes in the sky, the censors, Jeffrey Colt that did the investigation. They all had a glitch in, on them at the same time. Okay. Charles, okay, question, question. You said, do you mind if I ask you some more questions? Is uh, there- please. So um, you're saying that that we know that that corruption was was rampant in Afghanistan. It's just there was a money pit, it was a people pit, it was a time pit. Uh, it was poorly managed and run from start to finish. So. Your um, your own investigation says, or or you have sources that say that um, the the Chinook the land when it landed, uh, this LZ was was prepared ahead of time by these people with uh, IEDs, uh, and that um, what was the was the Chinook supposedly hit while it was in the air or on the ground? In the air. 
in the air with a standard RPG, not a guided weapon, just a regular dumb RPG. A hundred yards in the pitch dark RPG. So that's I, I was thinking what you're thinking was a man pad. Yeah, but, but it's an RPG. Yes. Yeah, because the the man pad they're deadly. I can understand. You know that supposedly it's the best. Uh, infantry carry uh, anti-aircraft, anti-helicopter weapon in the world. So I can understand that. In an RPG, I've seen some lucky things, some unlucky things. I wouldn't call it lucky shot. That's a bad choice of words for somebody to say lucky shot. You know, that, that, that uh, you know, maybe a one in a 10 million shot, but you don't ever use the word lucky when you're talking about losing all those lives. So you're convinced from from your own investigation or for a government report or, or from, from what, what convinces you that when, when that Chinook landed, that, uh, where, where did you get the facts? Is it, I mean, is it, is it from your research? Is it from a report after incident report? What, what, how do you know that they knew they were coming? I mean, what leads you to that? I'm a hundred percent sure the disc that they gave us, and we printed out the 1,364 pages, yeah. some of the parents said we weren't, they were going to ask for the disc back. Yeah. <clears throat> then I'm thinking, you know, uh, no offense to anybody, but, you know, a lot of them three-star, four-star admirals and generals are uh, a little pompous, you know what I'm saying? Like, I don't, nobody will ever figure out how to, they will, I'm only a construction worker. My wife works for AAA, you know what I mean? Plus, you're out of your mind. You just lost your son or daughter. They're not going to. Once they figure they ain't, they're just going to give up. But yeah. we're from Philadelphia. We don't give up. And now when my son died, and there's questions, in these 1,364 pages, the three eyes in the sky is going out, the, the sensors, I had a glitch. It's in there. Six IEDs on the way. Here's the biggest one. In Afghanistan, the Tianjin Valley, everybody's got a fire pit out, right? There's always fires going on. That night, no fires. Not only Taliban, Khwarezai, everybody knew. Khwari Tahir, who the high-value target they, they said they were after, he knew. It's in the 1,300 pages. He moved from village to village. Him, the, the Taliban's names are in there. I'm begging you. I'm begging you. Can you get us some help to get a real hearing? Mm -hmm. You know, anybody out there, any one of your contacts for the Gold Star families, mm -hmm. this is, you know, uh, we need some closure. Well, you know, we've we've been doing this this show, Libertarian Counterpoint, for some 30 years. And so far, we have not had a whole lot of uh, uh, response to the viewpoints that we put out in official circles. Uh, and uh, I think it's, you know, it's probably lucky that we're still on the air, if, if anything. Uh, so I don't know how much help we'll be able to get you. Certainly some of our viewers may be in uh, positions of influence where they can get you a little bit of closure, a little bit more help. But uh, as far as the influence of this show, I'm afraid that uh, I have to be humble about that. Uh, uh, the uh, the uh, questions that you're or the, the, the uh, things that your son suspected, uh, the, uh, when he said, Dad, you won't believe what's going on in this country. Do you have any idea what specifically he was talking about? No, no, he kept it close to the vest, Mr. Fields. He, he kept it close to the vest. And the reason for that was uh, they would give him a lie detector test every two or three months, them guys at that level. Mm. And the first question they asked, when was the last time you lied? A loaded question, yeah. you know, and uh, I went to dinner with my son down in Virginia uh, by the secret base when he bought his home and all. And we're at P.F. Chang's eating dinner. I'm trying to get information, trying to get information out of him. And he said, Dad, you know who's sitting next to us? I said, looks like a husband and wife. He said, that's what you think. I was like, Michael, what do you do? I wanted him to do the four years and get out, you know, and uh, he took off and he loved what he did. He loved what he did, but what did, what he seen and what was going on here in our country? As you can see now, there's some bad stuff happening here, man. Uh, you know, taking down statues, changing our, our kids' teaching. You know, I have granddaughters. I've, we have seven grandchildren, you know, uh, the money. And, and the other thing is, uh, 
20 years in Afghanistan? Are you kidding me? Have you ever looked at that? How much poppy we used to get for uh, morphine before we started? It was like 5% we would get from there. You know what it's at now? It's like 88% America gets. We don't have that many people on morphine. You know what I mean? Uh, look at the contractors that were there. Like Halliburton. Yeah. You know, I've, I've, I've long maintained that the purpose of the Afghanistan war was not to uh, create a democracy in Afghanistan or, or to uh, protect us from terrorism or any of the uh, standard excuses. The excuse or the reason for the war was to keep the military industrial complex fat and happy. And uh, same thing, same thing with Iraq. Uh, and Somalia, for that matter, uh, and, and and Syria, which is you know still an ongoing uh, thing, and and Libya, and, and and all of the rest of the brush fire wars we've been involved in, ever since uh, really ever since the uh, since Vietnam, and, and certainly since the uh, the Clinton administration. I mean, once we uh, so you know defeated uh, in effect the Soviet Union, there was nothing left for us to do. So militarily, uh, because there were, we had no enemies, we had no, we had no, re, there was no reason for a multi-trillion dollar or billion dollar military to exist anymore. So they had to imagine they had to invent reasons for it to exist, and uh, uh, and all of the, uh, the the wars that we've had since then are those uh, reasons. And I suspect perhaps your son was onto that. Your son had figured out at the light he'd seen enough inside information, seen enough going on from the inside was in a position where he couldn't talk about it uh and 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 knew that uh hey there's there's problems i guess the question i have is why since he obviously did not share any of that information with anybody he wasn't supposed to why would he be targeted along with other folks to die in that helicopter crash i, I believe that uh quite a few of them we're ready to speak out. Uh, I, I truly believe they're ready to speak out and talk about all the uh, corruption going on from from the highest level. It says in the 1,364 pages, General Colt, when he's asking, well, how high did this go? And the guy goes, over Betrayus? Yeah. Guess who else's name's in there? Leon Panetta. Leon the Snake Panetta. His name's in there who exposed after uh, after they killed Bin Laden, he took what, I don't know, 700 people from Hollywood down there to do Zero Dark Thirty. You know what he said? Oh, I thought they had clearance. How about Joe Biden three days after the Bin Laden raid at the Ritz Carlton in Delaware, which has been published, SEAL Team 6 killed Bin Laden. SEAL Team 6 killed Bin Laden. Anybody he could talk to. Robert Gates was Secretary of Defense. He said, yo, what are you doing? Yo, the military. Another coincidence, then 93 days later, all these men get killed? There's something wrong. Uh, Charles, got another question for you. Um, what have um, your your son, and again, my heart goes out to you, and and three of his, his mates, and I'm in the military, or not now. Obviously, I'm too old to do that stuff anymore. Uh, if they pay me, nah, they didn't, they no, they couldn't pay me enough. Um, so here's my question. There's there's four guys that were on this raid. You don't know the total number of guys that were on the raid because your son didn't talk about it. It's probably classified. But, but you've got 1,364 pages of information. I'm kind of surprised that they, they gave you that much information. But that's not my question. This is my question. <clears throat> Um, since you don't know how many people were, were in the op that, that basically, you know, assassinated Bin Laden and brought his body out, um, is there any way anybody could tell if, if, uh, that other people who were on that op have also... Uh, met their end in suspicious ways. Since, since it's Im impossible to identify the people that are on the op, I don't think, I don't think there's, if I were to go to Google or DuckDuckGo, preferably, because I know where Google would send me, right where Google wants me to go, um, and, and search, I don't think there'd be a list of, you know, uh, uh, petty officers. Who was on that SEAL team? What? Yeah, who was on that team? So, um, you know, that's a question I'd really 
uh, I'd really like answered at some point. And I don't know how, you know, because even if you did a FOIA request, Freedom of Information Act request, this stuff is all classified. Uh, you know, the government classifies, you know, how much toilet paper it uses if it chooses to do so. And a, a real smart lawyer that I know, uh, when I was talking about government conspiracies, that they're too stupid to, to actually have a conspiracy. And he said, well, that's before the fact. They're, they're very good at hiding stuff after the fact. Uh, he asked me a question. He said, how many, how much, how many of those FOIA requests, Freedom of Information Act requests, which I'm sure your attorneys put in records are ever completely responded to and i said you're absolutely right so just because you ask for it and just because there's a, a legal document saying you must respond to this doesn't mean they're going to give you the whole answer but you know, i'd sure love to find out um and i don't think i i cannot conceive of a way to find out who else was on that mission with your son and and you know if they're still alive um you know that that would be a question. I don't know how you'd, you'd ask it. Uh, and I get I have one kind of closing question to you, and it's it's a little off off subject, but hopefully hopefully I can ask it. You know, neither Richard nor I are big fans of wars. Where I'm very patriotic, uh, but I'm not a fan of of us deciding that we can go change what's going on in the rest of the world by throwing the blood of American boys and girls on the ground. Uh, I don't think that's a good way to change things. But um, with the debacle of the 20 years of Afghanistan and then leaving in a matter of days and leaving all those people in the lurch and everything, what do, what do the other SEAL and the other officers and the other men and women that you've talked to that might have served with that you might have uh, uh, reported to, what do they think? What do they think? What well, um, <clears throat> the C-130 that was b above the Chinook helicopter, her name is Joni, J-O-N-I, Marquez. Yeah. She came out and spoke. Um, she was on quite a few stations, uh, news stations. I've talked to Joni. Um, remember I told her my son wasn't burned. She watched my son die. He, my son was alive for like 15, 20 minutes with a gun in his hand. He took three bullets. Um, they tried to say the cook off rounds. Cook off round can, can't go through and kill you, you know? And uh, she uh, was threatened to lose her pension from the military, uh, jail. She went to a few congressmen and senators in Washington, D.C. Um, you can Google her. She's, she's out there, Joni Marquez. Uh, God bless her. She has to open up fire seven times. And got denied. Wow. We're out of time. But Charles, uh, we thank you very much for being part of the show. And uh, if you have, uh, you know, if you, if, you, if you in your quest for justice and truth find out anything else, let us know. Let everybody know. Thank you. Thank you for watching the Libertarian Counterpoint Show. 